Hello dear students, greetings of the day. I, Mohammad Zishan, welcome you to the online classes of Geography. Today we are going to have the third lecture of chapter 7, which is Volcanoes. In this lecture, we are going to study about the types of volcanoes. So far, I have taught you that what are actually volcanoes and what are the reasons or causes for volcanic eruption. And I have also taught you about the structure of volcano and the products of volcanoes in last two videos. In this video, I am going to tell you about the uh, about the types of volcanoes, right? So we can uh, classify volcanoes on the different basis, like on the basis on frequency of eruption, right? If we take the frequency of eruption that how frequently a volcano erupts whether it remains in a constant condition of eruption throughout the year or for a uh, recent historical time or has it erupted in recent historical time but not is uh, is in uh, you know active condition right now or it has not been erupted in recent geological period. So on the basis of that time period or on the basis of frequency of eruption, we can say we categorize volcanoes into three types. The first is active volcano and the second is dormant volcano and the third is uh, extinct volcanoes, right? So now what is the meaning of active volcano? Active volcanoes are those volcanoes which are in active condition right now. They either they are erupting or they have erupted recently. Okay. Uh, there are around 500 volcanoes in active condition right now like Mount Stromboli, Mount Etna and Mauna Loa which is the highest volcanic volcano right in the world if we uh, take the measurement of Mauna Loa from the point of its formation which is inside the sea right from there to its top it is even the highest than Mount Everest right so that is uh, these are called active volcanoes means which have potential also and which are erupting right now okay which are in active condition means they are spilling out magma lava right lava is still lava comes out from these uh, vents okay so these are called active volcanoes then second is dormant volcano now what is the meaning of dormant volcano dormant volcano means a volcano which has potential of eruption right means which may erupt uh, in future but right now it is not erupting and it has erupted in recent historical times recent historical times means before 100 years 150 years 200 years right or 50 years back it has been erupted but right now it is not erupting but still it is having a capacity to erupt again so that type of volcano is called dormant volcano and the example is mount klimin jaro then the third volcano is extinct volcano. Extinct volcanoes are those volcanoes which have not emerged in this geological time period. Means which has not erupted in recent historical time also and which has not erupted in the very very uh, you know long past also. Getting? So that type of volcanoes are called extinct volcanoes. They are not having you can say the capacity to erupt right now means they have capacity but they have no uh, you can say uh, no, no chance or you can say no potential to erupt in future right. So those types of volcanoes are called extinct volcano right. They have not erupted in this geological time period current geological time period and the name of the current geological time period is Holocene right these time periods you will study in higher classes let me tell you about this only 
since the creation of the earth we have divided the time into various parts okay right in various eras epochs okay periods clear so right now the geological time period is holocene right its name is holocene just you have to remember this term okay so the volcanoes which have not erupted in this time period those volcanoes are called extinct volcanoes right like mount aconcagua so these many uh, types uh, of volcanoes were given in your book right and the other types were not given in your book so i have given you the additional information right about the classification of uh, volcanoes that we will study also these one based on eruption based on mode of eruption and based on characteristics of lava and based on form of cone developed by uh, developed on surface that we will study but before we need to understand these three types of uh, volcanoes properly so in your book it is written on the basis of frequency of their eruption volcanoes are classified into three main types active dormant and extinct volcanoes active dormant and extinct volcanoes dormant meaning sleeping okay they are called sleeping volcanoes also clear then active volcanoes these are the volcanoes which are presently in active state and have erupted in the recent past there are at present about 500 non active volcanoes about 20 of these volcanoes may erupt at any time a few of these volcanoes are also in a state of permanent eruption some of the example of active volcanoes are mount stromboli mount etna in italy and pina tubo in philippines and mauna loa in hawaii right mauna loa in hawaii then we are having dormant volcanoes so dormant volcanoes these volcanoes have not erupted in recent historical period they are regarded as sleeping volcanoes what sleeping volcanoes means they are sleeping right now they will get awake one day and will erupt okay so whenever they are awake they erupt otherwise they are sleeping so these are called dormant volcanoes uh, and they may become active at any time examples of dormant volcanoes are mount kilimanjaro of africa and it is written in your book that mount vesuvius though regarded as active is actually rated as dormant because there has been no major eruption since 1944 okay so uh, mount vesuvius is called active volcano but uh, according to your book it is said that k it is uh, a dormant it has been rated a dormant volcano because it has not erupted since 1944 that is why we call it a dormant volcano right not an active volcano mount vesuvius but still in most of the books you will find that mount vesuvius is active an active volcano then next is uh extinct volcano these are the types which have not erupted in the present geological period present geological period holocene right and are not likely to become active again mount aconcagua of south america and mount kenya in africa are example of such mountains so mount aconcagua and mount kenya are the examples of extinct volcanoes so this information was there in your book now let us study something beyond the book okay so we are having uh, other volcanoes also we can categorize volcano we can classify volcano on the basis of mode of eruption also okay how they are erupting okay suppose if a volcano is erupting from this point suppose this is the earth surface this is the earth surface right and from this point here from this hole you can say if volcano is erupting in this manner okay from a center clear so that type of volcano is called center type volcano center type volcano and if suppose this is the surface of the earth and here if volcano is erupting out from this crack suppose if one crack is there this is a crack here like this okay 
and the lava is coming out in linear form from here right in this manner getting or not so that type of volcano is called fissure type volcano right that is a fissure fissure type volcano this is center type volcano and it is fissure type volcano then we are having next one uh, based on characteristics of lava i have told you in last videos that lava is of two types basic lava and acidic lava basic lava is uh, less viscous or its viscosity is less means it is less uh, sticky right hence it flows throughout a wide surface of the earth okay right so those uh, and the second type of lava is acidic lava acidic lava is sticky la lava right and because of its st st stickness or you can say high viscosity uh, it get accumulated near the vent or the opening of volcano only okay and forms very large and higher volcanic cones okay so in case of basic lava the lava flows on very large uh, earth surface on the very large area of earth surface and forms the volcanic shields whereas in the case of acidic lava it it uh, it, it 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 get collected or deposited where near the vent only okay near the vent or opening of the lava on, uh, opening of volcano only okay so that's there so on the basis of characteristics of lava we can divide volcanoes of basic lava and volcanoes with acidic lava so volcanoes of basic lava obviously right they uh, they will they they are uh, uh, you know uh, they are less viscous okay hence they will flow to very large uh, area of earth surface okay and will form what they will form shield clear so we can write that shield volcanic shield right so volcanic shield is formed by basaltic lava and one more thing this basic lava is also called basaltic lava right or basaltic volcanoes right and uh, these are rich in iron fe right and poor in silica poor in silica silica means sandstone uh, uh, sand okay balu clear and uh, they are highly fluid they are highly fluid why they are highly fluid because they are less viscous they are less viscous okay less sticky you can say clear so these types of volcanoes are called volcanoes of basic lava means the volcanoes which forms uh, you know uh, shields okay or you can say all volcanic shields can be categorized as uh, volcanoes of basic lava then we are having volcanoes with acidic lava so this one is highly viscous highly viscous means this is very sticky viscosity is higher okay its viscosity is higher and because of that it uh, cannot flow to a very large or distant area on the earth surface right and it will get accumulated on where on the uh, near the opening of volcano right then we are having what we are having next point is volcano uh, it is less fluid highly viscous less fluid and it is rich in silica rich in silica rich in silica right and uh, it is of light color 
light color and this is of dark color right so it was on the basis of characteristics of lava now we will study the next types of volcanoes which are on the basis of shape of cone right or form of cone developed at surface which type of cone is getting formed on the surface of the earth whether the cone is very large okay and stratified right which is called strato volcano or composite volcano volcano or whether a cone is composed of just pyroclast right and having an average shape and size which is called cinder right or whether the volcanic cone is having very uh, you know huge or big opening its crater is uh, bigger than the average craters okay so that type of volcanoes are called caldera right and then we will study okay, whether the cone which is getting formed is having very lesser height and looks like a shield of a warrior okay so that type of cone is called shield cone so these are the uh, these are the shape of the cones formed by the volcanic material okay which uh, uh, which has been erupted during volcanic eruption right so on the basis of on the, uh, based on form of cone developed at surface or based on shape of cone developed at surface we can divide the volcanoes into uh, majorly four parts the first is cinder cone or volcanoes now what are the cinder cones or volcanoes see suppose if this is the surface of the earth this is surface of the earth right and here from here suppose if a uh, volcanic eruption is taking place right so what will happen when the volcanic eruption will take place then what will happen first the volcanic ash will come out first gases will come out steam will come out okay and then <coughs> volcanic dust will come out then volcanic ashes will come out means according to the size of the particles the material will erupt out first the fine particles will come out then the heavier particles will come out okay and before that the overlying rocks okay the uh, rocks which are overlying okay uh, whether it is sedimentary rocks or other rocks okay which are on the uh, place of volcanic eruption those rocks will be broken down okay and then the material from inside will come out so if the material which is coming out from here okay is only cinder or lapilli what is cinder cinder means the weaker rocks which are near the uh, you know uh, uh, the magma chamber or in the pipe okay when the lava comes out and it, it takes with it some of the weaker rocks okay and then explosion takes place so what will happen this lava will reach into the sky and after that when it will fall down it will get solidified like this it will get solidified like this okay like the broken pieces of rocks okay so when a cone is formed by the broken pieces of rocks which, which are called cinder or lapilli okay cinder or lapilli when a cone is formed by the broken pieces of rocks cinder lapilli or volcanic ash and its height is just average not very high so that type of cone is called cinder okay cinder cone so it is formed just like this okay suppose this is a vent okay and then this is a vent right and here the material is getting deposited like this
these are the pyroclast what these are pyroclast pyroclast means cinder or lapilli okay and uh, various other things like scoria okay so many other things so what is happening here here what happened first of all the ashes the ash volcanic ash will come out and will get deposited here volcanic ash will come out and get deposited here then the fragmented rocks okay will come out and get deposited and the small amount of lava which is going upside like this in this manner right will be solidified and get deposited like a small small pieces of fragmented rocks okay which are called pyroclast and that type of that type of cone will be called what this type of cone will be called this type of cone will be called cinder right this is cinder then next is composite volcano now composite volcano as its name is saying suggesting that it is composed of different layers of uh, materials erupted uh, taken, uh, erupt deposited in a volcanic eruption so these are also called strato volcanoes so these are formed in this manner suppose this is surface of the earth right and from here this is a vent okay volcanic eruption is taking place so what will happen first of all here the first layer will be of volcanic ash okay volcanic ash or the fragmented pieces of rocks okay this first layer will be of volcanic ash and pyroclast okay and then second layer will be of lava right and suppose if it got cooled down and again the eruption is taking place so again this process will take place okay like this and again the lava will come out okay like this so again this the same thing will happen and again the lava will come out like this okay so it means you can say okay, here various layers of ash and pyroclast as well as uh, lava then again the pyroclast okay or volcanic ashes okay and then lava is getting formed okay so this these these are coming out in which form these are getting deposited in the form of layers okay in the form of layers and layers are also called strata right strata or layers so that is why it is called composite volcano or strato volcano what these are called strato strato volcano composite volcano or strato volcano so the example of this is mount fuji in japan and mount etna in the sicily of italy okay sicily province of italy we are having mount etna and the next type of volcano is caldera now what is the meaning of caldera caldera when the size of crater is huge okay the size of crater is huge that is called caldera uh, how it, it it can be formed it can be formed in this manner suppose if there was a volcanic cone like this okay and it was having this is this was the crater right this hollow is called crater the size of crater was like this suppose if uh, over over a period of time it this the opening or you can say this vent get solidified okay right this vent 
was blocked and solidified then after some time what happened this lava ascended okay and blasted this entire layer which layer this entire layer and the like this one okay this entire layer right and this one portion was removed in this explosion and this much bigger crater was formed okay so this is called caldera means you can say when the size of crater is huge that type of volcano is called caldera so it can be formed in this manner and it also get formed in another manner like suppose here we are having a uh, magma chamber let me draw three dimension suppose it was it is magma chamber right and from here lava will come out to the surface here like this okay and lava is coming out okay and suppose the intensity of explosion is so high that the entire magma chamber uh, you know uh, get spilled out right or get erupted in very short period of time right so what will happen the rocks which are here okay the, these rocks which are here like this suppose these are the rocks so when this will be removed like this the entire magma chamber will be removed like this then what will happen these rocks this layer of rocks will not have a support right a structural support then what will happen then this entire thing will come down side like this okay come down side like this like this okay depression will be formed okay a depression will be formed and this type of bigger crater will be formed in this manner okay bigger crater will be formed right so that that is also called caldera so caldera is getting formed in two ways by the repeated explosion of a volcano which is blasting away the mouth or you can say the existing already existing cold, uh, crater and hence the size of cold, uh, caldera is uh, sorry the size of crater is getting increased and becoming caldera or in another uh, way when the entire magma chamber is uh, getting emptied okay on very short time right then what will happen the rocks will not have the structural support to exist okay and the entire uh, region will uh, you know subside downside okay it will like it, it it has been collapsed downside okay right which is in hindi called dhans jana right so and it will form this type of hollow or a depression right and caldera will be formed right then we are having shield volcanoes right shield volcanoes are formed by the basic lava i have already told you these can be formed uh, when a volcanic fissure is taking place volcanic eruption is linear and uh, if there are so many uh, parasitic cones on a volcano volcanic cone volcanic cone is there okay and on that uh, so many parasitic cones are also there right and th through which a large amount of lava is coming out and the nature of lava is basic right which provides is fluidity and because of its higher fluidity it travels to very large areas on the earth surface and get spread all over the earth surface just like a shield of a warrior and called a shield volcano right so you can say okay if it is coming out in this linear form okay and get deposited on very large area or if there is a volcanic cone and that volcanic cone is having so many 
parasitic cones also like this okay from there the volcano is coming out sorry uh, the lava is emerging out okay here like this this is magma chamber from here lava is going upside lava is going there lava is going there right so in that manner what will happen it will be if it is the surface of the earth then it will get spread on entire surface of the earth like this right and it will just look like a shield of a warrior that is called the shield volcano like mauna mauna loa of hawaii i have already told you mauna loa is also the active volcano right and the example of caldera is apolaki caldera of philippine apolaki caldera of philippine example of composite volcano is mount fuji japan mount etna italy and example of cinder cone is pericute in mexico so these these were the types of volcanoes i hope that uh, it would have become clear to you you need to remember these three types majorly okay this will be asked in your exam and rest of the things you can just uh, keep in your mind for uh, the some some extra for, for some for the sake of some extra information thank you so much